Hi, I'm Maris, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the lab values erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR, and C-reactive protein, CRP. I'm going to be following along using our lab values flashcards. These are available on our website, leveluprn.com, if you'd like to grab a set for yourself. Or if you're more of a fan of digital products, I would invite you to check out Flashables, the digital version of all of our flashcards available on demand and at your fingertips wherever you go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first up, let's talk about what these lab values are. So the first one is ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And, and the name kind of tells you what it is that, that we're looking at here. What we're looking at is to see how much time it takes for red blood cells to settle at the bottom of a test tube. Uh, and this usually is pretty slowly. Um, there's, there's, you know, some time that it takes for all of these things to settle. So the expected range here is going to be uh, less than 20 millimeters per hour. So in an hour, we would expect to see that the red blood cells would have settled by less than 20 millimeters. Now, the other lab value that we're going to talk about is C-reactive protein, CRP, and this is a protein that is made by the liver, uh, and it's released into the bloodstream during times of inflammation. So it is normal for us to have a little bit of, of C-reactive protein floating around in our blood at a given time, but we don't expect there to be a lot of it because a lot of it would speak to inflammation. So the expected range here is going to be less than 0.3 milligrams per deciliter. The point here being uh, we're giving us a little bit of wiggle room for that C-reactive protein, but really we expect there not to be that much floating around in the blood. Now these two, uh, I always kind of think of them as being linked together. Um, they're, they're not necessarily the same. They're not always going to be uh, linked together going up and down at the same time. But the reason that I think of them in my head as being linked together is because Elevated levels of either one of these is related to inflammation. So when we talk about inflammation, though, it's re important to remember that there's a lot of different reasons that we might be having uh, inflammation in the body. Big ones here being infection, tumors, any kind of chronic inflammatory disease, and autoimmune disorders. And very commonly, autoimmune disorders and chronic inflammatory diseases are often the same thing. Um, so those are just some possible causes of elevated uh, inflammatory markers, such as ESR and CRP. So the point here is, is just that I want you to understand that these two lab values are not diagnostic, okay? So neither one of these lab values, when I look at it and I see that it's elevated, neither one of them can I say, aha, the issue is this thing right here. Instead, these lab values point us in the direction of inflammation. So it helps us to narrow down what it is that we're looking for and give us some more specific things, ways to guide our thinking when we are taking care of this patient. These can also be helpful for um, rheumatologists in diagnosing certain inflammatory conditions. This can be helpful in monitoring a patient's uh, chronic inflammatory status, but again, neither one one of these lab values is going to tell you definitively what it is that is wrong with your patient. It simply speaks to inflammation. All right, I'm so glad you stayed until the end because I'm going to test your knowledge of a key fact provided in this video using a quiz question. How should the nurse expect a patient's ESR and CRP to be effective when they are experiencing a flare-up of inflammatory bowel disease? both may be elevated. All right, that is it for this video. I do hope you learned something. If you did, would you leave us a comment and let us know what you learned? We really do like seeing that stuff. And hey, if you got a great way to remember something that I didn't mention, please leave that in a comment too. I love seeing it, but I know it's beneficial to other learners as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much and happy studying. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. And if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and let us know what you found to be particularly helpful.